Now at 10, solar energy takes center stage during a public forum in Columbus, Kansas this evening. Plus, a tax proposal to benefit emergency services will appear on the ballot in Allen County this November. And Missouri candidates talk Amendment 7 at a meeting in Joplin. The four states most watched news starts now. Cherokee County landowners gathered to discuss a proposed solar energy farm in the county. This is KOAM News at 10. I'm Dow Quick. Solar energy has become a hot topic in southeast Kansas with residents in Bourbon County also at odds over the potential of a solar farm in their backyard. About 100 people gathered at the Columbus High School Auditorium for tonight's public forum. The proposed solar farms would encompass more than 3,000 acres in Cherokee County. Cherokee County Commissioner Lori Johnson says the targeted area begins near Southeast 10th and Clem Road and continues south and east to the Baxter, Oklahoma State Line, along with some acreage on Southwest Boston Mills Road. Attendees tonight had a chance to ask questions and voice concerns. At a previous meeting, commissioners issued a one-year moratorium on solar farming so they could explore options that include regulations and potential zoning. It's getting cold out there. Let's check in with Chief Meteorologist Doug Hetty for a first look at the weather. Yeah, it was kind of chilly today, even though we went to 62. It was windy all day long, so that made it feel colder than what it actually was. We started at 43, well below our average high of 71 for this time of the year. And it's cooling down. It's 45 in Joplin. It's 46 in Pittsburgh. Most of us low to mid 40s across the board. Thankfully, the winds are coming down just a little bit. We've had northeasterly winds all day at about 10 to 20. These are backing down, which is nice to see, and they'll actually be fairly light as we get through the overnight hours tonight. All right, freeze warning in effect. Temperatures 29 to about 33 degrees. So if you have any plants that can't take it, you may want to cover them up or bring them inside. Then a slow warming trend. We'll look at that here in just a bit. See you soon. A plea agreement in a Southeast Kansas murder case where a man and woman are both charged. Clint Nyberger of Parsons, Kansas today pled guilty to amended charges in the shooting death last year of Dakota Patton. As part of that deal, the prosecutor is recommending Nyberger receive a sentence of a little more than 24 years in prison. 23-year-old Dakota Patton was reported missing in April of last year. His body was discovered in a field in Neosho County, Kansas, the following month. According to court documents, Clint Nybarger was reportedly the last known person to see Patton alive, arguing with him at a gas station over a woman. While Patton was missing, Clint Nybarger and Kimberly Thomas got married. They then traveled to Missouri for their honeymoon, and that's where police arrested them both. Authorities originally charged them both with first-degree murder and conspiracy to commit murder. Kimberly is scheduled to appear in court for a hearing tomorrow. A federal judge today formally sentenced a Pineville, Missouri woman in connection with the murder of a pregnant woman in October of 2022. Amber Waterman will spend the rest of her life in prison without parole for kidnapping and killing a pregnant Arkansas woman and her victim's unborn child. Back in July, Waterman pled guilty to one count of kidnapping resulting in death and one count of thereby causing the death of a child in utero. On October 31st of 2022, Waterman kidnapped and abducted Ashley Bush Maysville, from Maysville, Arkansas to the Waterman residence in Pineville, Missouri. Later that day, first responders reported to an emergency call of a baby who was not breathing. Waterman claimed that she had given birth to the child in the truck while on the way to the hospital. She later admitted that child was Bush's child, Valkyrie Willis, who died in utero. She also admitted kidnapping Bush in order to claim that unborn child. An autopsy indicated that Bush died as a result of penetrating trauma of the torso and her death was classified as a homicide. On November 5th, Allen County, Kansas residents will be asked to vote on whether to approve a sales tax increase. A yes vote would allow a half cent increase in the sales tax with funds supporting the operation of Allen County Medical Services. County commissioners say the increase would generate an estimated $1.2 million a year, which would be used to help pay for their ambulance contract. 
That contract is expected to be a $2.2 million this next year. The Allen County Commission says that if the sales tax is approved, they'll lower property taxes in the county. We're just trying to figure out a way to um, help bring down property tax. I know that uh, some of our surrounding counties have, have done the very same thing. They've been successful with it. Um, it, it just makes sense in our minds. Some Allen County residents say while they want to support EMS, they still have concerns about the sales tax and the potential for an overall increase in taxes in future years. Commissioner Lee says while unlikely, future circumstances may require them to increase taxes, but the hope is to keep property taxes lowered. A couple of candidates running for state office stopped in southwest Missouri today. Missouri State Treasurer Vivek Malek, candidate for Secretary of State Denny Hoskins, and candidate for Lieutenant Governor Dave Wessinger visited the Jasper County Republican headquarters to try to drum up support for Amendment 7. Amendment 7 is the only citizens vote and the only vote once amendment. We are not against illegal immigration. We want people to come to the United States, find their own American dream, become prosperous, and uh, live a happy life. All we ask is that you come into this country legally, and if you have come into this country legally and you are a non-citizen, we just ask that you complete the process, become a citizen, so that you can vote and participate in the process. For more information on Amendment 7 and other election topics, you can see on the ballot, go to uh, koamnewsnow.com slash elections. A long-standing charity celebrates five decades of good deeds. That story is coming up. Plus, the Carl Junction Marching Band sees the fruits of its labors. Jumplin's Ronald McDonald House Charities of the Four States hosted a ribbon cutting in celebration of 50 years of global RMSHC today. KOIM's Melissa Alexis was there for the celebration and has more. Oh, it was a wonderful celebration. The very first Ronald McDonald House opened in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania in 1974, 50 years ago. Collaborating together, they were able to open that first house uh, in Philadelphia and seven families moved in. And today, here at our house here in Joplin, we've served over 3,400 families. Ronald McDonald House Charities of the four states in Joplin hosted a ribbon cutting to celebrate 50 years of Ronald McDonald House making a difference by providing meals and a place to stay for families who have a child receiving medical care at a nearby hospital. You never plan on your child being in the hospital. If you're expecting a baby, you never plan on delivering early. And so when those unexpected events happen, it's nice to know that a few blocks away or across the street from a hospital that you can come and you're welcomed with open arms. Many families that are sad, some happy, and it's just heartwarming to see that we're here to help these families that are under so much pressure. They provide this service so the families can focus on their child's recovery. Everything is provided for you. You don't have to worry about going out and getting food. You don't have to worry about cooking. You have a nice bed to sleep in, warm shower, and the love and care of all the volunteers that are here. Ronald McDonald House in Joplin says they always welcome more volunteers that are willing to help. Reporting in Joplin, Melissa Alexis, KOAM News. To celebrate the 50th anniversary, RMHC of the four states encourages supporters to buy a legacy brick to contribute to their fundraising efforts. The Greenbush Education Service Center in Girard, Kansas hosted a career exploration for students today. Eighth and 10th grade students from four area school districts were able to participate in hands-on career exploration and real-world learning experiences. This is going to be a learning uh, curve for them. They're going to see that life is full of expenses and more than anything we want students to feel connected that the work they're doing in school does matter in their financial future. The students also participated in career chats with local experts from diverse fields and learned about how their online presence leaves a lasting digital footprint. The Carl Junction Marching Band is making enormous footprints in the competition world this fall. 
The band competed against 16 bands from Missouri and Kansas. They won an impressive top score in eight categories, including first place overall, best in class, best drum majors, best color guard, and more. As you can probably guess, the students and faculty worked long days to achieve that success. Um, well, I honestly, I just work with some really great students. I, I really don't get much pushback from any of them. Um, so it's, it's pretty easy. I say, hey, this is what we're going to do, and then they go do it. And, uh, and it's, it's, it's worked out really well for us this year. You can see the band yourself in Saturday's Maple Leaf Parade Festival in Carthage. A little later, we have some advice on furnace maintenance before the weather gets too cold. Plus, it is going to get too cold for us tonight as temperatures drop near freezing. We're going to check that out on the rest of your week coming up. Well, of course, a cooler day for us today, but it turned out to be a nice Tuesday. Just a little bit on the breezy side made it feel colder than what it actually is, and it's chilling down out there right now. Great shot. Indigo Sky Casino and Resort. Indigo is just outside of Seneca, Missouri. All right, yesterday was our first day behind the front, so we kind of we cooled down into the upper 60s, and then today only into lower 60s, so it's been pretty nice. But a freeze warning in effect. We always do this once we get our freezes and frost for the first time until everything is kind of killed off as we go into the fall. But again, if you have any plants, you don't want to take the chance with cover them up or bring them inside. We'll only hang out near that freezing mark for about two, three hours. Uh, we won't get down below 35 until about five o'clock in the morning out of it by seven or eight o'clock in the morning. Right now, let's go ahead and zoom in. It's 42 Nevada, 41 in Monette, Bentonville, 47, 42 in Benita. The Odisha is sitting at 46 degrees and those northerly winds. It's still kind of breezy, but they've calmed down a little bit. So a northeasterly wind at about five to 10. They're going to stay fairly light as we go through tomorrow. But once we get into Thursday, they'll start to switch back around out of the south, pick up again. But in return, that's going to give us a warming trend by the time we head the rest of the week and into the weekend. All right, clear skies. We're going to stick with the clear skies as we go through the evening hours or the rest of the overnight hours. Not much going on here. We still have our upper level flow right out of Canada. And this is the system that cooled us down over the past couple days. So we want to remember this because we're in a cycling weather pattern. We're in the new pattern. This will return two or three times in the winter and it will give us Arctic air blasts. You just, it's the same storm system, you just got to take the seasonal differences. As we go through the rest of the week, high pressure pulls in, giving us really nice conditions. Then we'll start to focus on our next storm system, moving into the western third of the country, which we need. We've had very little rain for about two months now. All right, temperatures near freezing by morning, mid 50s by noon. Once we get into the afternoon, 62, 63, 64 degrees. Pretty nice Wednesday, it won't be as windy. Tomorrow night, still cold, not as cold. Upper 30s to near 40 degrees. Once we get into Thursday afternoon, warmer, as we warm up near 70 for afternoon highs. 34 in the morning, 56 by noon, high temp, 63 degrees. Let's look into your weekend. Friday looks great, mid 70s. Check this out, Saturday and Sunday, upper 70s to near 80. You can see the rain increasing to our west, finally starting to advance in Sunday night and then into Monday. All right, 63 tomorrow, 70 on Thursday, 75 Friday. Near 80 as we head into the weekend, so a fantastic October week for us. Some rain chances and a little bit warmer as we go into next week. And man, we need the rain. We have for some time. It uh -huh. is very dry out there. Thanks, Doug. Doug told us there's a freeze warning coming up tonight. and means it's time for gardeners maybe to take some steps to protect their plants. Now, most plants can withstand temperatures down to 28 degrees without significant damage, except for some sensitive tropical varieties. They can suffer what's called a chill injury. A temperature is well above freezing, so it's best to bring them indoors in early fall when possible to protect plants from frost you can use insulating materials to cover them.
cover it with a cotton sheet, not plastic. And uh, you know, if anything's tender, pick your green beans, pick your peppers, pick your tomatoes, and get them on inside because if it gets 29 or below, it'll sure turn them to mush. According to the National Weather Service, the average first autumn freeze of the year occurs on October 17th in our area. The earliest on record was September 23rd, back in 1995. This week, many of us might choose to fire up our furnaces for the first time this season. Don't forget to change your filters. When you initially turn on your furnace, you might notice a burning smell. That's usually normal, just a sign that the furnace is burning off any accumulated dust. If you do notice a problem, you might be able to fix it on your own. It'd be the very first thing. Change the, change the batteries and change your filters and see you know, if there's any kind of, maybe some lights flashing inside of the furnace window or anything. Uh, count those flashes and then you could call a professional and uh, you know, just give us a call and we'll be able to sometimes walk you through it right on the phone, not even have to come out. It's not too late to call for a routine furnace checkup. The professionals will clean the furnace coils, blower wheels, and check the system's amperage, all things to make sure your furnace runs as efficiently as possible this winter. Still ahead, a blockbuster trade in the NFL and highlights from tonight's volleyball match between New Heights and Diamond. John Dales has those stories and more coming up next. Hey, welcome into sports. I'm John Dales. We're coming down the stretch of the regular season for high school volleyball in the state of Missouri. District tournaments get started as soon as next week. And tonight, two of our local teams go head to head in Joplin. New Heights libero Lily Plasman gets honored before the game tonight for getting over a thousand career digs. And it's just her junior year. Lady Cougars host Diamond, who's trying to earn its 20th win of the season. First set. There's another dig for Plasman. She keeps it alive and her teammate Lydia Hippel is going to rise up and get the block. Cougars score the first two points of the night. They have the early lead. Later in the first, Cabri Parmley for Diamond gets a block of her own. Wildcats win the first set 25-19. Now to the second, Diamond keeps it rolling. Aubrey Ball sets up Callie Thomas. She spikes it home and gets the kill. A couple of minutes later, ball goes to Lauren Turner this time, who goes softly over the top. That's another kill. Diamond wins by sweep. Lady Wildcats take care of New Heights 3 to nothing on the road. We're into the back half of the college football season here in the four states. That means week seven of the Division II coaches poll. Pittsburgh State holds firm at number seven in the country. This comes after the Gorillas beat Nebraska Kearney by 10 points on Saturday. They've got just one ranked opponent on the rest of their schedule all the way throughout the regular season. That's number 11, Central Oklahoma, who's undefeated. PSU plays the Broncos on the road in a couple weeks. This Saturday, though, the Gorillas host Fort Hayes State, who's 5-2, receiving votes, but unranked. That's the second to last home game of the year for Pittsburgh State. As football season hits its stride, college basketball keeps getting closer and closer. Yesterday, we got a look at the preseason top 25 for men's college hoops. Today, the women preseason poll gets released. Not much of a surprise. At the top of the poll, defending national champion South Carolina sits at number one in the nation. 27 of the 30 first place votes go there as well. Right behind the Gamecocks are UConn and USC. Lady Sooners of Oklahoma are ranked 10th. They're one of four SEC teams inside the top 10. Behind them, Kansas State not too far behind, over at 13. To pro football, some big news earlier this morning. Three-time All-Pro wide receiver Devontae Adams will be reunited with his former Green Bay Packer teammate Aaron Rodgers in New York. Adams requested a trade a couple weeks ago. Today, the Raiders grant that request. Vegas receives a conditional third round draft pick in return. And Adams comes to New York just a week after the Jets fired their head coach and a day after they fell to two and four on the season with a loss to the Bills. Over to Major League Baseball, Yankees win game two of the American League Championship Series over the Guardians tonight. Final score six to three. 
New York now has a two games to none lead on Cleveland in the best of seven series. And the presumptive MVP winner, Aaron Judge, hits his first home run of the postseason in this one. That one came in the bottom of the seventh inning, put this game on ice. Other baseball news you might have seen during Hurricane Milton last week. Tropicana Field, where the Tampa Bay Rays play their mm -hmm. games, got destroyed. That building, well, they announced today the Rays will not be playing there in 2025. Wow, yeah, the roof of that structure pretty much obliterated yeah. by that storm. We'll be right back. One of the world's largest restored steam locomotives spent the night in Coffeyville, Kansas. Union Pacific number 4014, also known as Big Boy, is crisscrossing 23 states on the Heartland of America tour, which celebrates 150 years since the beginning of the Union Pacific Railroad. Tonight's stop, Kansas City's Union Station, which of course is historic in and of itself. Tonight, it's going to get cold. It's already yeah. pretty chilly, Doug. Most of us are sitting uh, 40 to about 43 right now. We'll drop back to freezing. 63 tomorrow, so still kind of cool. What a great day. And then 70 Thursday, 75 Friday. Fantastic weekend as well. Some rain chances moving in early next week, which we've only had really one system that's produced rain in the past two months. Is that right? My goodness, yeah, it is very dry out there. Whatever we can get will be welcome. Final sports note. The Miami Lady War Dog softball team plays at the state tournament this Thursday and Friday in Oklahoma City. Tomorrow they leave for the state tournament, so we're going to hear from them. Yeah, we wish them well. Thanks for joining us. Don't forget the morning show starts at 5 a.m. Let's make it a great tomorrow.